Good afternoon, Cam Brar for Cam's Mortgage Minute for Tuesday, June 26. Today I'm going to continue on the vein I was on yesterday and I'm going to talk to you about more of the fallouts from uh, what's occurred in our uh, new rule changes with the mortgages. Now, Mr. Flaherty has uh, considered the outcome of this to be very desirable. He feels that the shorter amortizations, the higher qualification rates, the lower overall debt ratio limits uh, will restrict buying power. He wants to see the uh, buying curtailed somewhat, and I think he's definitely going to get uh, his, uh, you know, his desired effect to this. Now, however, a lot of Canadians, approximately 9.6 million who are homeowners, may not concur with Mr. Flaherty. Simply for them, if we do see all of this happening and occurring, we may see a bit of a downturn in the prices. Uh, there may definitely be a sell-off here. And if this sell-off starts to occur, well, who's that going to impact? That's going to impact Canadians who rely on their home to be their single biggest retirement vehicle. For a lot of Canadians, their principal residence uh, is part of their exit strategy into retirement. They definitely plan to sell it, downsize, and move into something smaller, take that extra equity, that liquidity, and save it into their retirement. And with what Mr. Flaherty has done, this definitely may, uh, you know, definitely be in peril to some degree. Now, the other group of Canadians who are definitely going to feel the impact of what Mr. Flaherty has done is new purchasers. Those are uh, first-time buyers who are, again, a large segment of the overall buying public out there. And these changes are definitely going to cause some restrictions on them. And let's face it, it's the first-time buyers, like any other food chain, they feed, you know, the first-time buyers, they buy property. Sometimes that's property for people in the middle of the road who are selling property, who are either downsizing or moving up to the next level. We know that any time we start tampering with things, they're definitely going to have an impact. Now, I'm not saying I wanted a U.S.-style meltdown. I, I, nobody would. But I think that, again, and I've harped on this before, we could have done this more sensibly. We could have taken a more restrictive approach to the amortizations. We could have gone from 30 to 29 the following year, 28 the following year. Basically ramped this down till we accomplished it. We could have done the same thing with the debt service ratios. But you know what? We've gone all in. So we're basically in Vegas now. We're betting on this thing that this thing is really going to help stem things and not cause it, uh, cause uh, causing a dire effect on the market, which is what we've been hoping to avoid. So hopefully, uh, with what the Feds have done and what OSFI is doing, they're hope betting on the side that this is going to bring the train down slow enough so the train doesn't crash altogether. My hopes in all of this is that this isn't going to be the impetus for the train crashing. We'll see where it all goes. I mean, in 2008, there was a lot of dire warnings, and it didn't come to be as true as everyone had thought, and we basically got out relatively unscathed. We'll see what all of this has to uh, lay out, and again, the future will be uh, telling us an indicative of what these decisions and the impact of these decisions will be. Anyways, I will see you tomorrow. We'll talk about some more of this, and I'll talk about some other uh, musings that I have about this whole thing. Anyway, it's Cam for Cam's Mortgage Minute.